Morning, friends. Coffee time. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The neighborhood being Ajiji, Jalisco, Mexico. It's a beautiful day. Here, let's look out the window. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. A little hazy this morning. Not blue, blue sky. The birds are loving the weather and so am I. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So what are we gonna talk about today? Well, first, um, I'm going to address a couple of questions I got in the comments. And then I want to follow through on a promise I made to you a couple of weeks ago about telling you how much it costs for my property taxes, my car license plates, and my car insurance here. I still haven't gone to pay my water bill. Uh, you pay that once a year. Uh, most people pay it once a year. Some people don't pay it for many years, but that's another story. And then I want to finish my story about uh, cutting and trimming trees in Mexico that I started last week and said would be continued. So a couple of comment questions. Uh, Tracy Carroll. So the walls you are repairing, did they start growing mold? I did not quite understand that. Did you have to clean with bleach first or what? No, uh, it's not mold. It's a chemical process similar to this. And I'm going to show you a picture here of magic rocks. So the vinegar and the whatever's in the magic rocks makes the rocks grow. Same thing happens in the um, concrete and any kind of moisture here, but it's not mold. It's called salitre. And salitre uh, in, in, in Spanish, but in English it would be salts of nitrate. Anyway, here's a picture of the finished uh, project after Juan got done digging out the uh, cancer of the walls, not mold, and uh, re-concreting them and replastering them and resealing them and then repainting them. He did a great job, don't you think? Uh, another question, and this one is also from the same person, um, Tracy Noel, Carol. Oh, what is the powder you use for the leaf cutter ants? I'm in Mexico. Uh, in my last video, I talked about a powder that we use that's banned in 50 countries because it's carcinogenic. And I said, don't bother asking me what it is if you're in the United States. So that's why she says, I'm in Mexico. Here's a picture of it. And uh, folly, that's the banned chemical. I didn't actually start using that on leaf cutter ants. I bought it because of fire ants. When we moved into the property here, we had a lot of fire ants on the property. And it's that chemical that finally um, has kept them in check. Uh, you get a fire ant eruption, they kind of make real fine diggings out of the ground and you see that and if you walk past it, they swarm out. Well, we have very few eruptions on our property here anymore, but uh, last week I was standing out in the street talking to the neighbor by the garbage cans and all of a sudden I realized, ouch, I got a bite on each foot. Um, a bite is actually a misnomer for fire ants. Um, ants and wasps are very closely related and fire ants have a stinger like a wasp. So they bite with their mouth and hold on and sting with their butt. Supposedly their venom is stronger than cobra venom, but of course you get a few molecules, not a big squirt of it. So 
Um, it doesn't kill you, but it sure does annoy you. Here's another one. Uh, I have two questions. This is from Levi. What are the current mask requirements in Mexico right now? I assume it is mandatory to wear them inside any establishment, but not required if you are out walking, exercise, running, or biking in the open air. Is that correct? I don't know if it's legally correct, but it's certainly correct in what you observe and see people doing. And um, you have to wear a mask when you go into businesses. Um, you can't get into Walmart without a mask, and you have to wash your hands with sanitizer, and they sanitize the carts for you. Um, you know, this whole mask thing, you know, and now the United States has decided that they're going to screw that all up with not requiring masks and states passing, whatever. Wearing masks in Mexico has never been a political statement. It's never been about the freedom to be stupid. It's been about respect for your fellow human beings. And I, for one, and many people I know, and most of the people I observe continue to wear masks out of respect for other people. And if you don't like that answer, you need to ask somebody else. Uh, his second part of his question, I understand that no COVID test is required to enter Mexico at this time. Um, but what is currently being discussed there in respect to vaccination? Uh, we came home a month ago and we're not um, we, they didn't take our temperature or in any part of the process. We didn't have to have any special identification uh, with regard to COVID to come into Mexico. Um, uh, to go back in the United States, you need to have a COVID test result within the past 36 hours, and it needs to be negative. <laughs> um, there are no uh, COVID passport discussions going on here that I know of. With regard to vaccinations, uh, they are administering uh, the Chinese vaccine and the Russian vaccines here in Mexico. And in, just in last Friday's paper, uh, they said they got some more of it and were uh, once again having uh, vaccinations for people at the local park in Chapala. I haven't paid a lot of attention to that because Lynn and I both got two Moderna shots in uh, the United States before we came back to Mexico. Uh, I talked to a friend who said he got his other shot, his second shot of the ch Chinese vaccine uh, last week and he was going to wait two weeks before he decided to go out to a restaurant with us. So that's all I can tell you about vaccinations in Mexico. Well, let's talk about my uh, property taxes. Property taxes. I have two properties um, and I think uh, we could probably evaluate the properties at um, five, six hundred thousand dollars. That's not an offer to sell. It would be listed higher. <laughs> uh, my property taxes uh, total for the two properties this year was six thousand six hundred eighty-one pesos, which is three hundred and fifty-one. U.S. dollars with today's exchange rate, and curiously enough, um, it went down 66 U.S. dollars from the previous year. So these are the 21 taxes, uh, 2021 taxes, 351 dollars, and last year it was 66 dollars more than that. That never happened in the United States, and incidentally. Uh, that also includes garbage service three days a week. They pick it up out here in the street. Uh, my car tags. Um, these 
always in the past they've given you a sticker that goes in your window. This year when you get a sticker, you get a card uh, that you, I guess, keep in your glove compartment. Anyway, uh, 759 pesos for the van and the BMW Roadster each, which is $38.52 for my license plates for my van and the same for the BMW. The Honda Foreman uh, ATV, Quattromoto, was 17 US dollars. And that's for a year. Now, that's paying them in April. If you pay in January, February, March, there's a declining discount, a bigger discount if you pay earlier. And I'm paying the maximum. Uh, it would be about, I think, 30% less if you paid early in the year, like January, and then less of a discount in February, less of a discount in March, and no discount at all uh, past then. So I'm paying the full price, whereas I could have gotten a discount if I were here to pay earlier. Another thing about paying your car tags, if you get a, 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 a ticket, a, a moving violation ticket, or a parking ticket, and you don't pay it, it's all computerized, and when you go to pay your car tags, they will hit you for it, and it'll be stiff. It goes up a lot. Um, I'm going to make up a number, okay, but it happened to me. I got a parking ticket in Guadalajara, and I didn't pay it. And when I went to pay my uh, for my tags the next year, I'm guessing... It's only a guess, because I don't know how much it was originally. It cost me five times as much as it would have if I had paid it right away. Anyway, oh, and if you get a parking ticket or a moving violation ticket, and you pay it within five days, it's half price. And they aren't much anyway. Uh, car insurance. I have the... Um, BMW fully insured with comprehensive, and it's 182 U.S. dollars for a year with just standard limits uh, and a 10% deductible on the uh, comprehensive. And for the van, it's insured uh, liability only. It's 152, which is not that much less, but... Um, it costs a lot more to insure it because it's a much higher horsepower and bigger, heavier vehicle. So that's it, 152 and 182 to insure my uh, car and my van. I haven't gone to pay my water bill yet. Um, I paid it last year in August and it was around 3,000 pesos for the year which is like $150 for the year. So that'll give you some idea of some of the economies of living in Mexico versus other more expensive parts of the world. But I'd like to make a point, and the point I want to make is that it's not always about the cost of living, and I have a comment that sums this up as well as it can be said. This is from Miguel Negrete, a day ago. For myself, the cost of living is irrelevant. The main reason I plan to move to Mexico is because of the beautiful culture and geography. People in Mexico are so kind and caring. The USA's culture is of European origin, where people appreciate their privacy. In Mexico, the culture is people-oriented, and that's why people say hi when you walk by them in the street. You will never see people in the restaurant on phones instead of conversing with those around them. People in the U.S. live to work, and people in Mexico work to live. That's why I live in Mexico, not because of the cost of living. Well, let's get back to the story about trees. In Mexico, 
the federal government retains ownership of all the trees in the country, even those on private property. And so when you need to get a tree trimmed or cut down completely, you have to get a permit. And uh, when we had the big ficus and the um, avocado tree trimmed, Hi, Lynn. Hi, when we got the ficus, the big ficus and the avocado tree trimmed a couple of years ago, uh, we got to get permits. Well, the guys that I was paying to do the trees got permits from the uh, city offices in Chapala for trimming the trees, and I had to pay for those permits. Uh, the cost wasn't exorbitant, but it was... I don't know, I, I remember it being like $40, $50 um, for the permit to trim. Anyway, um, years ago, and I'm talking about 20 years ago, so let me preface the story that I started in last week's video about cutting out some trees and trimming some trees. Let me preface it by saying some of the people in this story are dead, <laughs> and so, and some of them <clears throat> are still around. So, uh, in order to protect the living, I've changed the names. I'm not going to talk about um, the Mexican names that are in this story. I'm going to come up with a couple of other Americanized names that have nothing to do with the real names. So let's talk about Bob and uh, Roy. So I've contracted with Bob to build a third bedroom and a second bathroom upstairs because when we bought this house, um, the first house, so which is half of what you see now, um, the upstairs what is now a uh, guest room with an in-suite bath was just an open, unfinished patio with no walls, no railing, no nothing, uh, just bare concrete uh, on the floor and no walls, no roof. So I contracted with, let's call him Bob, to uh, build a bedroom and a bathroom. And it turned out that uh, I subsequently found out that Bob was also a federal police officer, a federale. And then a little later, uh, I was presented with a problem in that we got uh, a deal made on the second property. And part of the reason for that, besides me not wanting somebody to move in next door so close, and also me wanting a larger property, was that I needed room to store my motorhome which was a 1988 33-foot south wind. But the problem was that in order to make the turn into the property, uh, there were trees in the way, big trees, like ficus and a couple of old, big, really tall palm trees, and a whole bunch of arborvita and ficus that went all along the property line. Well... I found out that um, Bob, the contractor slash federal officer, was also some kind of an official in the Department of Ecology, which is where you get permits to trim the trees. So I'm telling him, hey, um, do I get a permit to trim these trees? And he said, yeah, you should get a permit. And I said, well, I'm going to call, and now let's call him Roy. Roy has passed. I could use his real name, but I'm not going to. So he says, "Don't." Uh, Bob says, don't call Roy, because Roy is always getting a permit to trim trees, and then he cuts the whole thing down. We've been chasing Roy for years, trying to catch up with him, because he always gets a permit to do a little bit, and then he does a lot, and don't hire Roy. Okay, fine, get me a permit. So this goes on for two, three weeks, maybe a month. And, and I, meantime, paying storage on my motorhome at La Floresta Storage. So I'm anxious to get those trees cut down and removed so that I can get my motorhome onto the property. 
and I'm bugging Bob to get me a permit. And finally, one day, he says, I am too far up the ladder in the Department of Ecology to mess with your permit. Go get Roy and let me know when he's going to be here so that I don't show up. Okay, fine. So I go over to Roy's house, leave a note on his door because he's not home that I got a job for him. And I come back and there's a meeting going on in my Pravada. And the prov meeting is with a couple of federales, uh, two uh, federal police pickups. And um, the result of the meeting is that the federales are going to come on Sunday and cut down my trees for me. Um, apparently you don't need a permit if you've got a ninja costume and an AK-47 with the big uh, federale sign on the side of your pickup. Uh, and it's going to be 2,000 pesos and I'm buying the beer. Well, uh, Sunday comes and all of a sudden I've got a federal police pickup in my yard and five officers, two of them with chainsaws, and they cut down my trees, and it's 2,000 pesos, and I buy the beer. What are you slapping on the floor? Big alacron. A scorpion? Well, it's not as big as it was. Well, let me, let me, let me get a picture of it. Hang on. No, it's all smashed. It's all smashed? It was standing up tall. When I saw it, like I almost stepped on it. Here. I can't get these things up. Let me get it. Oh, here it is. Part of it is back there. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a scorpion. Look at that. He's jerking around a little bit, but you definitely... Did him in. I got him. Go to the toilet. Okay, we flush him down the toilet. That's what we do. I wish I could tell you this was uh, an unusual thing, but it's not. <laughs> okay, where were we in our story? Up. What? He was too high up in the air I could see. Oh yeah, okay, thank you, Lynn. Bob says he's too high up in the environmental department to mess with my permit, so go get Roy. So no, I was way ahead of that. They're having the meeting out in the Pravada. And then they came on Sunday and they're cutting down my trees. So anyway, um, the job gets taken care of. It's 2,000 pesos and I buy the beer. And I've got uh, photographs of them cutting down my trees just in case it turned out that uh, somebody did ask about a permit. Uh, a couple days pass and... Roy comes over with the note and says, what's the job? And I show him that the job is already done. And he asked me who did it. And I said, well, Bob and some of his friends. And Roy says, uh, why didn't you call me? Wait for me. And I said, well, Bob said, he just go ahead and do it. And Bob said that they're always chasing you because you get a permit and then you want to trim trees and the permits for trimming and you cut down the whole tree and they don't like that. They're 
after you. And Roy says, Bob is my godson. I'm his godfather. <laughs> uh, a lot of Mexicans are related in some way. I actually made up a joke about that. Um, Guadalajara, five million people, tres familias. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.